A murdered maid and a tragic bride-to-be. Fifty years separate these stories, but both have become notorious for having given birth to one of Kent's most well-known and documented hauntings. Reported as one of the most haunted roads in England, today we look at the phantom hitchhikers of Bluebell Hill. The A229 is a 30 mile stretch of road. Assigned in 1923, it runs south from Rochester in northwest Kent, coming to an end on the junction at Cooper's Corner near the East Sussex village of Hurst Green. The most northern section of the A229 takes drivers past Bluebell Hill, a chalk hill situated between Maidstone and Rochester. As such, this particular stretch of road shares its name locally. And it is here, in August 1916, that our story begins. Emily Maria Trigg was a 20-year-old woman who had been working as a housemaid in Rochester. She was described by her mistress, Catherine Cooper, as quiet and respectable and not the kind of girl who would flaunt herself before men. On the afternoon of the 6th of August 1916, Emily had left her residence in Rochester to visit her mother, a journey she made every Sunday. However, this Sunday she didn't arrive at her mother's. Upon being reported missing, Emily's case was not initially considered a priority by local police until some six weeks later when John Jennings, a local greengrocer, discovered a human skeleton whilst picking blackberries in Bridge Wood near Bluebell Hill Village. The skeleton was later confirmed to be that of Emily Trigg, based on belongings found at the scene, and whilst the cause of death was never fully confirmed, it was believed she had died of suffocation. Eyewitness accounts at the time highlighted several potential suspects, however despite thorough police investigations and one soldier accused and tried, no one was ever charged with the murder of Emily Maria Trigg. Suzanne Brown was a 22-year-old woman from Adelaide, Australia, who was due to wed her fiancé, RAF photographer Brian Wetton, on the 20th of November 1965. However, fate had other plans. On the night of the 19th of November, Suzanne and three of her friends, Judith Langham, Patricia Ferguson and Gillian Burchett, were all returning home from finalising wedding preparations, driving on Bluebell Hill. It was here that their Ford Cortina collided with a Jaguar. Whilst both occupants of the Jaguar survived the impact, reports state that Judith died immediately at the scene, while both Patricia and Suzanne were taken to nearby West Kent Hospital in critical conditions. Patricia died soon after admission while Suzanne survived for five days in a coma before passing away. Her fiancé Brian barely left her side. Gillian, despite seriously injured, was the only member of the group to survive the crash.
More than 50 sightings of phantom hitchhikers on Bluebell Hill have been officially documented, dating back to the early 1930s, with many believing them to be the ghosts of Emily Trigg and Suzanne Brown. One evening, a woman by the name of Renee was cycling down Bluebell Hill on her way home, when out of nowhere a dark mist appeared in front of her, and the next thing she knew, Renee was thrown from her bike as if she'd hit a solid object standing in the road. However, as she stood up and examined the surrounding area, there was no one in sight, little to no traffic, and nothing in the road that would cause such an impact. Slightly shaken, Renee carried on her journey without further incident. Later that same year, a motorcyclist noticed a young woman standing alone in the middle of the road. When he spoke to the woman, she requested a lift to nearby Church Street. The motorcyclist agreed out of fears for her safety. However, upon arriving at Church Street, his passenger had mysteriously vanished without a trace. Around midnight on the 13th of July 1974, Maurice Goodenough a 35-year-old bricklayer from Rochester, was driving home along Bluebell Hill. Police reports from the time state that Maurice claimed he'd seen a young girl on the side of the road who, without warning, stepped out in front of his vehicle. Unable to break in time, Maurice hit the girl with a hell of a bang, as he described. Maurice immediately left his vehicle and found the girl lying motionless in the road, covered in various cuts. He described her as being approximately 10 years old, with shoulder length brown hair, and she wore a lacy white blouse, a skirt, and white ankle socks. Unable to stop other motorists for help or find a telephone, Maurice covered the girl's body in a blanket from his car and rushed to a nearby police station. However, upon returning to the scene around half an hour later with police, the girl was nowhere to be seen and after a widespread search of the area lasting into the next day and inquiries made at local hospitals, it seems no trace of the girl was found. All that remained was the blanket he'd used to cover the body and neither the car nor the road showed any signs an impact had occurred. In November 1992, Ian Sharp, a 54-year-old coach driver from Maidstone, was travelling home from work. Ian stated that a woman appeared out of nowhere in front of his vehicle and with a fixed gaze directly into his eyes did not move as he slammed into her. Ian brought the vehicle to a swift stop fearing he'd killed the woman, but as he searched around the vehicle and the surrounding area, there was no one in sight. Ian reported the incident to police at the time, who informed him of the local legend and similar accounts they'd received. Ian later stated in a newspaper interview, I honestly thought I'd killed her. You can't imagine how it felt. I was so scared to look underneath. But I knelt down and looked straight through. There was nothing there. 